Okay, so I'm recording the meeting just for prosperity's sake. So it will just hit. Oh my, Andrew Curry and JP Andrew Lear. Curry. Yes. Yeah. Hey guys. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Wow. All right. Uh, so if everyone can just camera off, um, we're going to start this reunion for us. This is it. So I'm going to video setting. Camera so. off. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, and I'll, I'll call you individually back on, just so, uh, and there you go. I don't know how to do this! So Jeff, call me later, because I'm still- I don't know how to get the camera off! I'll do it for you, give me one second, there you go. <laughs> I'm gonna turn me off, okay, thank I did. you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so Pauline, from between now and about 10 minutes, Google how to turn yourself back on, okay? There no, I, I know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, welcome everybody. This is a very exciting uh, Asian Exploitation Zoom Prob Comedy Lab. Uh, and for our, the OG cast and our guests here, uh, what the Zoom Prob Comedy Lab is, is back in 2013, I believe, we started doing comedy labs uh, where Asian Exploitation went back to the community and we started doing improv jams in person, of course. Um, so we did improv, we did also some sketch ideas, which, you know, which we tried out in front of a live audience, and then we determined if they were good enough for our yearly show. Um, our last show was in 2016, oh, yeah, 10, year, 10 years actually. Um, but myself and James have kept the age limitation name going and been doing these comedy labs twice, uh, twice a month. Um, and then of course, when COVID happened, we slowly switched to online, like almost every other improv troupe and comedy troupe out there. Um, and through various Google sources, we've learned some games um, and whatnot. And we actually have a nice knit group that we that, that have called themselves the Asimitations, yeah, Asimitation Comedy Lab Rats, uh, which I'm very, oh, I'm, I'm very proud of them. They took some dedication and some initiative, uh, especially thanks to JP, uh, yeah, JP Da Silva, um, John Paul Da Silva. Um, so for leading this uh, along with James and they meet every Saturday and I'll, I'll, they'll be doing this at the improv set uh, in the next hour after, after the reunion part. But the reason why we're here tonight is because exactly 15 years ago, um, as you can see, this is our, our show poster, Sunday, May 28th, 2006 at 8 p.m. Um, hey, Kevin, if you could just video off, that'd be great. Um, there we go. I'll just do that for you. There you go. So as I was saying, um, there's our show posted there. So Sunday, May 28th, at uh, the Bad Dog Theater, the original Bad Dog Theater at Broadview and Danforth, uh, we did our very first show. And um, it was very exciting for all of us to do it. And Age Rotation was actually sort of the brainchild. Uh, there's three founders, myself, uh, Gary Chan, but the actual person that uh, came with the idea, his name is Glenn Gabriel. And Glenn, if you want a video on, as well as Gary. I'll stop sharing this. Woohoo! All right! There we go. Yay! There's Gary Chan, hey. and then there's Glenn Gabriel. Hey, everyone. Awesome. Woo! Um, so, Glenn, if you want to just go ahead briefly and, 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 and talk about uh, how this came to be. Oh, gosh. Um... You know, I guess like many of us that uh, go down this path of comedy, we uh, we start taking classes, we start learning about places where we can perform. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna really compress this, but basically, uh, you know, doing stuff at uh, Second City, 
the bad dog or, or theater sports before, before that. I, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of other uh, Asian Canadian comedians and, and, and actors and people uh, in, in that space. So uh, eventually I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't see a group, a troop made up of us. So that was the real, uh, the real uh, spark to this whole thing. Okay. And uh, Jeff sent me an email. And to be honest with you, I forgot about this, but obviously I sent it to Gary and Jeff. And if it's okay, I'll just read a bit of it. Yeah, so that please do. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to figure out when I sent it. It must have been sometime in 2005. So we're going in the Wayback Machine when, when, I, when I read this out. So here we go. Gary, Jeff, fellow Asians, lend me your ears. In the past, I think I've told both of you about my plan to produce an Asian comedy night at the Bad Dog. Uh, at this point, all I have is a concept, Asian variety show, and what kind of acts and technical help I'll need. I've never done this before, so I could use your help. I'm, I'm kind of condensing it. That's good. Um, I'd like to organize the show for the fall. Well, yeah, it took a little longer than we thought. <laughs> I'm, I'm confident we can get a sellout. My concern is that we make it a really good show so we can do it on a regular basis, like monthly or every two months, uh, sort of like the black comedy nights at Yuck Yucks. Uh, if you have any ideas, feel free to share, sign Glenn. That's it. Um, so Gary, what was your thought when you first read that email? I was thinking, let's do it. Obviously I had a little bit of doubts because you know this sort of thing hadn't been done before um you know throughout the comedy community you'd see uh some asian performers scattered through the, the stand-up scene you, you run into an occasional <clears throat> asian person in, in improv and you've never really seen something where uh, uh you had a collective troop of asians uh performers doing stand-up improv and sketch so i was excited by the idea and i figured between the three of us you know we can probably put something together yeah. So um, it was uh, it was a feeling of excitement, but a little bit of trepidation. But I, I had this feeling, you know, where we were entering into unknown territory. But uh, that was that was exciting as well. Yeah, that's true. I, I felt the same way. Um, and I don't think Gina Bella is here, but uh, Gina Bella. Here. Oh, Gene, Gene. 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 Um, I remember Gene mentioning that, and I think we all felt it that when we're doing improv with with other people uh, who are who aren't Asian and. Usually, when they the uh, the term was pimping, I forgot what the political term correct term is right now. But when we were called on, we were often called as an Asian character. Whether they, oh, oh, this guy knows. Uh, oh, hey, Gene. Um, you know, oh, you know, let's bring up uh, you know Wing Wong because he knows karate, and we were all sort of pigeonholed into into that idea. Um, but yeah, I, I I thought it was great that that Glenn had this amazing idea um, for this. I'm just gonna share. We actually got. Um, an article in the Toronto Star. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Can everyone see that? Yeah, okay, good. So this was written uh, uh, back in 2006, actually the weekend before the show happened. Um, I know you can't read it all. So um, I'm just gonna go through it quickly. Yeah, oh, sorry, May 20th, yeah, that's the, the, the two days before the show opened. Uh, and like Glenn said, he was quoted, where are they? Gabriel, 33. You were 33 back then? Uh, must be some other dude. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you can't help but be in this community and look around and say, where are more faces, faces like mine? Uh, and I guess that's the synopsis. So that's the main reason uh, why Glenn had the idea and he invited myself and Gary to be on. And back then, the Bad Dog Theater had a weekly program, Midweek Mayhem. And I think we tried, uh, we, we tried out for that. And funny enough, <laughs> uh, uh, one of our classmates and friends, Deborah Cape, who's not Asian, but we, uh, she's, I guess, considered a, an original member, maybe, or at least mm -hmm. a, a thought of that. <clears throat> yeah. So we were, yeah, so we made that team up uh, just for that Wednesday night. Um, I forgot how we did. I don't know if we, we, we yeah. made it onto the next level or not, but it was just a fun time to do that. Yeah, actually, Jeff, that was um, that Friday show, uh, which was the, Sorry. Uh, the the student show at the time. So okay. I remember the early days of Asian exploitation before we actually had the Be Pacific show together. 
right. uh, we got together and did some improv sets there. I think uh, Gene may have done uh, done some as well with us, but I remember Deb Cape was part of that as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that was pretty fun. That's it. Awesome. I think uh, one of the things that we did want to do is, uh, you know, we wanted to have that Asian comedian, uh, Asian comedian voice represented on stage, so that hopefully uh, other uh, Asian performers or people are thinking of doing it can say, hey, look, wow, these people are doing it on stage. You know, we could do something similar. So we, we wanted to be able to uh, set that example and just have some have people see that, you know, they could, this is a path they could take as well. So that was another important thing for us in, in, uh, in putting Asian exploitation together. Nice. Nice. Um, so I myself, I'm still have the, I'm still doing some stuff uh, with improv and whatnot. Uh, I know Gary, you have virtual man hugs. Um, right. Have you done an like, on, online show recently, lately? I, actually, no, we have not. Unfortunately, with the pandemic, uh, we've opted to 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 wait that out. And hopefully, you know, when things get back to normal, we'll be back to doing some some live performing again. So awesome. Keep your fingers crossed for that. Awesome. And Glenn, when's the last time that you hit the comedy stage in any sort of way? Two thousand eight. <laughs> awesome. I gotta admit, after that, uh, I just sort of made a break from that. And okay. it's funny though, I, I, as most people in the audience can probably, you know, uh, uh, agree with, a lot of these improv skills, we call it improv, you know, these skills are transferable. And so an example for me is I, I like, I'm a, co I'm a curling coach. So I, I use those skills when I, when I coach. So if you teach a coach, those skills are invaluable. So uh, yeah, while I might not be doing those sets at the bad dog anymore, uh, I am using them in my, uh, those skills in my regular life. Nice, nice. I totally agree on that. Uh, yeah, the improv skills you learn, very applicable to everything else. Uh, I find even during my regular work, it kind of helps me keep an open mind when other colleagues are, are not necessarily open to ideas. I'm always thinking, yes, and. Let's let's take this and run with it, and it, it really does prepare you for other uh, situations as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, and like uh, Glenn, you mentioned you're, you're into curling now. I remember that you actually took the the troop on a, a, a curling bond spiel, if I'm correctly. That's right. And that was a fun day. I, I must say, my second time curling, I believe, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun that day. Thanks oh, for sharing that skill. Yeah, no, I, I still remember it. I, there's still photos that exist somewhere of it, and. Uh, yeah, all of you guys came over to East York that day and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it was a skill I'd love to share. So I still am doing that. And I know there's at least one other uh, member of Asian Exploitation uh, alumni, <laughs> there he is, uh, who is really into curling, arguably more than I am. So uh, maybe we'll get into that later. Yeah, yeah, I think we will. Um, all right. So before I invite some other of the old cast, is there anything you want to finalize and saying about uh, your experience and uh, with the with the remembering uh, remembering our first show together? Uh, I'll be honest. I sort of the memories kind of fade away a little bit, but the feeling really doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I just consider myself lucky to have met some really great people all those years ago, and if you. Had, you know, if you told me I'd meet the, this great group of people uh, for that short amount of time, that, at least that's what it felt to me. Uh, and, you know, some of them still being a part of our lives now, uh, you know, it was, it was worth it. It was completely worth it. Yeah. And Gary? Yeah, I, I echo Glenn's sentiments. Uh, it was a fantastic time. I have a lot of fun memories from, from all the rehearsals, the shows that we did, some of the festivals we played. Yeah. A lot of good memories, and uh, I'm I'm just really thrilled that here we are, 15 years later, we're we're still connecting and uh, uh, over over this great experience that we had together. So, and and I like to think uh, in, in a small way, you know, maybe we we've set the stage for other uh, Asian comedians to come. Uh, some, yeah, uh, some of the ones that are uh, out there uh, killing it on the scene right now. So. Oh yeah, exactly right. Like like you said it best, Gary. Like with Kim's convenience and Tita Flit and and uh, the Tita Collective, um, you know, there's just so much. Asian faces out there now um, and they're staying true to who they are and the, the scripts they're writing are staying true to the heart not just a sort of stereotype of what pe other people see exactly yeah yeah I think the last thing I'll, I'll add is just 
I, I wasn't sure whether we could do it. You know, it was one of those things where I, I was certain, you know, I was pretty sure we could, but until we actually put those first shows out there, you know, it was up, up in the air a bit, but it, it was really proof of concept. I wanted to know that we could do this as a, you know, as an Asian comedy community in Toronto. And, uh, you know, the results speak for themselves, I guess, and he, all these years later. So uh, I will also give a shout out to the old bad dog. I, yeah. I have very, very fond memories. And the <clears> fact <throat> that they let us use their basement for when most <laughs> of our practices, when, when, most yeah. of, when more of the original cast comes on, uh, I would love to hear those stories because uh, I'll never forget that building. And every time I pass by that area, I do think about it. It's, yeah. it's you know, God bless the bad dog. They let us, they, they gave oh, us yeah. a long leash. Exactly right. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun being in the basement, you know, even though it was the basement at the time, we had to move some stuff around, but we made it work. Um, and yeah, it, uh, it was rent free for to rehearse every Monday night. So that was a major bonus. Yes. Um, you know, and, and being Asian, you know, don't spend money, just, you know, get what you can. It's like, <laughs> we yeah. had no money, Jeff. We had, <laughs> yeah, no that's right. You had no money at the time. That's exactly right. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's give it up for Glenn and Gary. Um, out there. Uh, and now if you guys want to video off, I'm going to invite up uh, right. Susan, Pauline, and Sandy. Oh, are, Sandy, have you finished your dinner yet? Yeah. Woo! There we go. And Pauline, can you get your camera on? Pauline. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me see. I, I, I think I can do it for you. Give me one second. Because I can't do it. Because you stopped it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Let me in. Okay. So here they are, the ladies of Asian with Haitian. And let me just uh, bring this picture up. So there they are. So yeah, doing the uh, Charlie's Angel pose way back when. And, and like, actually, in the breakout room we had before, Susan asked, wow, we, we don't, have we aged at all? And to be honest, I don't think we, we have, you know, I think this is, this is how we look, you know, still. I still have that dress. <laughs> well, I no longer have that shirt. I no longer have that size. I think this is like 40, this is like 40 pounds. I don't know, arms, like, a long ago. Different, I'm a little different now. So, okay, so, um, like, so I'm gonna ask everyone and we could, maybe one at a time so when you were first heard actually how did you hear about Asian like who is the person or did you was it word of mouth uh that you heard about this Asian comedy troupe and what are your first thoughts um okay I can I, I can go so I was taking um in pop classes at the bad dog and at the time I think it was Marcel Marcel was my instructor at the time and then he just you know, that, that Marcel kind of demeanor, um, hi. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're interested, you know, like a bunch of group of uh, Asian people, you know, they uh, get together and, um, you know, I think, I think, I think we would really like to uh, get together with them and, uh, just, uh, do, do some improv. And so, you know, typical Marcel demeanor. I, I, don't, I don't know if I got that demeanor down pat, but, um, <laughs> So I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then, yeah, there's nothing creepy about meeting a bunch of Asian people in the basement of the Bad Dog Theater, no. right? So, and that's then, right. yeah, so, yeah, that's kind of, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I want to hang out with people. I like friends. So, okay, yeah, that was kind of how it happened. Okay. And then, sorry, I think I missed, so what was your first thoughts when you heard about that? You're like, oh, okay, is that a thing? Is it possible or... It's more like, oh, there's more people like me that yeah. want to be busy. <laughs> okay, sure. I guess we'll see what that's all about. So yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Susan. So what were your like? How did you hear about us and your first thoughts about us? True. So I actually heard about Asian exploitation through James Chang. I think one of you three founders reached out to him. Uh, James Chang is my childhood friend, hero, everything I ever wanted to be. So Aww. when he when he said they also need a chick, I was like, can that be me? 
And he graciously said yes. And I, 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 I love what Galen said. It was a very short time, but it just left such a deep impression on me. Um, my life has not been as funny since I left and had kids and then just did that whole thing. Um, but I think, I think after this, one of us should try to go onto Wikipedia and do an entry called Basement Improv. Oh, uh, I don't, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Um, I, I, I think the smell will never leave me. Um, and I mean that with much fondness. Um, it smelled of Jeff's George Brown, you know, birthday cake that I'll never forget you presented to me with some mildew in the air. Anyways, mm. it was so much fun. And I'm excited to see that you guys have continued it all these years on um, with all these new people. So amazing. Um, Great work, guys. And, I, and I'm excited to see what you guys do tonight. Oh, awesome. Oh, thank you, Susan. Um, Pauline, so how did you hear about us and what was your first thoughts? Um, I was taking, I think it was like a comedy writing or script writing class or something. And I'm at Glenn. Was it Glenn? <laughs> Glenn there at the, and he said, hey, why don't you come on? I, you know, I've got this uh, comedy troupe I'm uh, co-producing. I'm like, okay, sure. He goes, yeah, it's an all Asian group. And I went, wait, we're not the only ones. This is really cool. So I he was like, yeah, I'm on board. And just showed up and went, okay, hey, look at all these Asians. It's kind of cool. It felt weird. Holly, we, Holly, we went to high school, school together too. We went to high school together. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we went to high school together. That's incredible. Um, so hold on. So was that the first time you guys saw each other before, since high school or are you sort of new? Uh, like, yeah. No, I bumped into her on a cruise ship before that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's one of many, Pauline's many jobs that she's had. Yeah. <laughs> World traveler. <laughs> now I in the shoebox in Toronto waiting for lockdown to end. <laughs> yes, I, I, think, I think we all are doing that. Um, now, uh, so as of right now, I don't know if, if people recognize Pauline, but she has been on Kim's Convenience. Um, um, yeah, yeah, but it was a good part. You're the dim sum lady stare, I think that, that should be a meme, yeah. really. That should be a meme, that'd be great. Uh, and then in, in one week, I saw her in two commercials for McDonald's and, and Home Hardware. Sorry, PC, PC food, right? No? No, oh, no. Any of the, oh. anything? Any of under the Loblaws umbrella, pretty much like value okay. Loblaws. I'm the girl in the bathtub yep. eating fruit. And yep. um, yeah, that's me. And the home <laughs> hardware, the, 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 the love, shed. You know what? Can I just say the Loblaws job was the best and most relaxing day at work ever. Yeah. Because I laid in a hot bubble bath, or not <laughs> really hot, but it was like to my temperature. It was a bubble bath. and people would come in continually and adding bubbles. It was lovely. <laughs> I've never left work so relaxed in my life. Nice. That sounds like fun. Uh, and Sandy, you've been in, in some commercials as well. And anything else that uh, people may know of? Uh, I'm like really, really popular and well-known in the plant community nowadays. Yes. <laughs> I'm a crazy plant lady. Cult and following? Very big cult following. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got I've got people from all over Canada messaging me about plants, wanting to buy plants from me. Now, are these <laughs> people are think it probably is a joke, but it's not because like I import plants from Asia and then I acclimate them and then I sell them. And that's that's kind of how I've been uh, Oh, is that one of the plants there, Pauline? No, but Sandy, while we're on the topic, we need to talk about this. <laughs> we do not need to talk about that. That needs to just not be talked about. I, I think it's called adding water, Pauline. Maybe that's... <laughs> Maybe too much. One of the two. Actually, quite surprisingly, um, most people overwater their plants. Okay. I think that their plant needs a lot more water than it really needs. All right. And Susan, uh, have you uh, done any acting or anything ever since uh, the days? 
Uh, just for my job, um, I, I'm like Glenn. I'm just improvising all over the place at work. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, all joking aside, um, I think improv really is one of the most important skills that I accidentally fell into. And there have been many times where, for me, the stakes have been high and I, I didn't really know what was you know, all the information, but just having that improv muscle was amazing. So uh, long answer to say, no, I haven't been in any commercials. Okay. But we're-, oh, we're... Been in movies. What? Sorry, Polly. I've been in movies too. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sometimes, occasionally, just on the side. Yeah. Uh, actually, my left uh, shoulder was in a movie with Matt Damon. So, hey, there we go. That's all cool. All right. Um, so any <laughs> that's it. All right. So let's give it up for Sandy, Susan, and Pauline. Uh, so yeah. And if I could bring up uh, Brian Lee, Gina Bella, uh, Max Minigawa, and Damon Lum onto the camera. Need help, Pauline? You're good. All right. I got it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Gene, how you doing? I got, there. I, I didn't see you come in. Hey, Pauline, you're back. <laughs> there she goes. There she goes. There she goes. Okay, so uh, same questions to, 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 the, yeah. to the gentleman. Um, how did you hear about us? And then what were your first thoughts when you heard about an Asian troupe happening? I'll, go, I'll start with Gene off first, Gene. Uh, I believe um, at one point I was asked if I was interested in auditioning. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I, my my memory is a little foggy because at one point I too was making a living importing plants. Uh, the so. same kind of plants, though, or uh, you know what? That's different time. Okay. Uh, we don't need to. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I believe I uh, uh, out of the uh, Jeff, Gary, and Glenn. Uh, kindly asked if I would be interested. Okay. In, uh, yeah. And I, I think because we knew you from before from Bad Dog as well, we said, I think. Yes, I had been doing, yeah, I had been doing some shows at the Bad Dog. Yeah. At that point, I believe. Yeah, so, so we knew you before, like, unlike, and only Dan was there too, I believe. And I think Max knew Glenn from Stand Up Class. But I think uh, you and Dan were one of the few ones that were actually at the Bad Dog at the same time Glenn and I and Gary were there. Um, but like I said, so what was your first thoughts when you said, whoa, what's happening in Asian troop? Um, no, I mean, I was excited for sure. And nice. much like uh, the other people, the, I, I don't think I've alone that sentiment just to see other people. It's like when a unicorn realizes unicorns are real and they see other unicorns. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I like to think the troop is funnier than unicorn. So, uh, don't quote me on that. I, I won't tell your daughter that either. So, good. Thank you. Good point. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Max Minagawa. It's so great to see you. I haven't seen you for a long time. Yet. No, thank you for yeah. Thank you for having me. Of and uh, yeah, it's, as everybody said, you know, the time we had at the Asian Sports Station when we did the show, we did a number of. Uh, the basement rehearsals, that was the you know, best time of my life. I always cherish my memory, that memory. And nice. I was, and again, I'm, like my memory is hazy too. I think I met Glenn at the second city. Ah. And then, so he, uh, he asked me then, you know, what do, what do you think? So I said, you know, why not? It's, it's fun. As long as I have fun, I didn't care if I wouldn't sell out or not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it, we did a lot of shows together. I remember that we even hijacked the Jeff's the cooking class up at John Brown. Yes. And we did a skit in front of the cooking class student. I don't know yeah. if they liked it or not, but it was a really great memory. So I, I, I appreciate that too. And also uh, Jane, it's not here today, but uh, we're under her leadership and the direction. That was a great yeah. memory. Um, one of the things I remember about Max is uh, he brought this toy that I think it was four players, you'd grab it. <laughs> And there's a timer or something, and whoever was the last one to let go got shocked. Um, yeah. um, 
it was just, it was the, it was the meanest but funniest thing if you weren't playing of course um do you still have that max by the way i'm just curious sir I, I think so I, I still have it somewhere okay you don't need to get it i'm just asking. I know. <laughs> or is it right there wow that's that's even scarier yeah um <laughs> all right uh damon lum damon yes. how you doing man oh good thanks for awesome. having me thanks for doing this jeff hey, oh, no, hey, this, yeah. is, this is history um so like, like, like just like gene i think you were the bad dog as well and I, yes. I think um yeah so how did you hear about this or were you approached by the, one of the three uh, I'm trying to recollect, and I believe it was. I think it was Glenn. I'm pretty sure it was Glenn, actually, because okay. I seem to recollect that we were at the Bad Dog, not for a show or anything. Uh, this was summer 2005, I believe, and we were getting ready for the Danforth Hockey Tournament. Oh, yes. Yes. And I think we were warming up, we're getting some downtime before getting ready and stuff. And I thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, sounds like an idea. Why not? I'm looking for... Oh, be cool to get some opportunity to branch out and do other things. I knew, spent a few years already with the Bad Dog slash Theater Sports. Uh, uh, Gary, Jeff, Gene, you're like one of the first three people I've met when I started doing that, especially Gary, actually. So, yeah, it was that. Okay. Um, all right. And Brian Lee. How you doing, Brian? Hey, everyone. That's it. So uh, I think you were friends with Glenn, if I'm correct, and that's how you heard about us. Yeah, uh, my memory is also vague, but I, I think at the time I was taking uh, stand-up comedy classes at Second City. Yes. I was not very serious or like strong, intense behind it, kind of like taking a music class. And Glenn was kind of the cool kid who had a rock band going, and he was kind of <laughs> like, "Hey, you got, you ever think of playing in a band?" I was like, not really, but it sounds like there might be some good plants around here. So, <laughs> all right, so, kind of joined in, and uh, it was it was kind of like this secretive experience. Like I remember, you'd walk into the bad dog, and then you have to pass the, the regular classroom, and then get to the back and walk down these stairs and absorb this visceral smell, like like sucking on a baseball glove, and you get down there and. Uh, we'd have like just hours of fun. Just, uh, it really felt like just playing, you know, like, yeah. like, but, but as adults, something I, I kind of, I guess had not done since I was a kid. And, and actually seeing you all like now, it kind of just is like firing these kind of things I haven't thought about for years. Like um, uh, you, most of you were at my wedding, you know, yeah. performing uh, as entertainers, you know, um, to kind of earn your uh, your shrimp and mushroom uh, side yeah, dish. Exactly right. Uh, I, I remember auditioning for some charades show with Susan that was uh, going to be shown in like the Caribbean. Um, and it ended with us not knowing whether or not we were in or not. Um, you know, like uh, huddled close with Glenn and Gary behind the curtain at the bad dog, that, that thin layer of vapor before you know you burst onto the stage and if uh james chang w was alive today <laughs> he would say that uh it was it was it was a beautiful time for all of us god bless james uh, he meant so much to me um oh. uh, he was a real son of a bitch that guy but uh Oh, once you got to know him, you know, with his pants on, he could really be oh. something special. <laughs> That's so sweet. Uh, 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 so as as uh, people that don't know Brian, he's a very uh, subtle comedian. He has a, a, a great timing. Brian, what is your actual job? Just for those people that don't know you, what do you actually do? And what, what did you study? And where did you study? Please tell the, the unenlightened, please. Um, so I studied math, uh, in Toronto and then in Russia. And then I lived in Vegas for a while studying Scientology and, uh, nice. real estate hustling and ah. did my PhD in math while I was, <clears throat> uh, playing with all of these, uh, great people, um, providing welcome distraction from the world of the abstract and the unknown. And then after um, I graduated, I sold my soul. 
and I went into nice. finance. I work at the CPP Investment Board, toying with all of your retirement savings, oh. um, putting it in things like, um, you know, horse uh, horse garments and like uh, sumo sumo wrestler bonnie tails and things like that. Oh, that's you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm actually planning to retire in two, in two years, two or three years. So hopefully, uh, you know, I'll have some money down there and something. Yeah, there, sh there should be something left for like uh, maybe a couple of saltines and uh, <laughs> some smoked canned oysters. Uh, so I did this for for the for Glenn, Gary, and the, and the ladies. Uh, let's just bring up some pictures here. So uh, here we have uh, a very, very young, uh, well, Again, Brian Lee and oh, Gene, um, and another one, Glenn there, uh, and then let's hit off. And there's oh, there's Max, <laughs> and and Daryl. Daryl's not here, right? Daryl, I Daryl's been always elusive. Um, you know, I, I messaged him this morning. Is he here? No, he's not here. Oh, hey, Susan. There you go. Um, and oh, there's Jane. We'll get back to Jane in a minute. Let me just go back here. Some other shots. Uh, I couldn't find this picture of myself, Damon, and James. I don't know where that single picture is, but so here's the uh, sort of collage uh, that was made. Uh, Marcel um, from the Bad Dog Theater, he is the one that took all these pictures uh, of us and he just asked us to do some stuff. Or I think it was one of our dance numbers or we were doing something, just having some fun. But yeah, that's our picture there. Uh, just having some fun and uh, being Asian, you know, that's about it. Um, so I asked this before, so, uh, like I mentioned before, so Damon, you were, you had some improv happening, uh, not during the pandemic though. Um, no. so what else are you doing? So a couple of things. I'm a member of the Arts and Letters Club now. I was served yes. on the board a couple of years ago for a two year term. Uh, basically during the pandemic, I'm doing a monthly series called Ad Libs Got Talent on Zoom. And it's a combination of solo, spoken word, music, and maybe a little bit of improv. And I've shown some photography there too. Nice. And I have a photography website, DamonLove.com. Oh, okay. I'll put it in the chat. And yeah. you see some stuff from TIFF and Toronto International Film Festival and some, some of my travels and some other stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Cool. Uh, Max, uh, other than curling, um, have you hit another comedy or other stages or cameras? in front of the camera i uh, haven't done anything anything creative unfortunately oh, but, okay. yeah, uh, but the curling is one thing i've been doing a lot i think uh, i blame glenn for that introducing us to curling <laughs> so that was the beginning nice i remember when when you were with us you had this photo series you would take a picture of of, of uh, like scenery and then uh, oh. one of your body parts not a dirty body part but maybe your your, your hand or something so that, that's me and it was very intriguing and it's very like with this Instagrammable. So you were like a trend center back then before Instagram started. And I was very, and, I, that was very interesting. And once everybody started, I stopped it. Okay. <laughs> it's gone too big. Oh, forget this. And you know, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And I, we've already heard from Brian. Uh, Andy, I want to say to, before we go on, Brian. <laughs> oh, just, you know, it's it's amazing you guys have carried this on. So big ups to uh, Jeff and James. Like, I think it's uh, remarkable that you've you've continued kind of the legacy or the or the the spirit of of the whole thing that kind of germinated in Glenn and your and Gary's head. So, you know, congratulations on that. Right. You know, it's like a, it's a piece of history or a piece of culture that yes. you guys have managed to keep going. Oh, thanks, Brian. Thanks. All right, let's give it up for uh, Brian, Damon, Max, and hopefully Gene's still here. Just give uh, Gene a shout. And uh, let's bring up, uh, he is not dead. He is so much alive, Brian. I hate to hear, say this to you, but, uh, James Cheng, if you want to come on camera. Hi, I'm alive. He's alive. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, to be honest, I forgot that about you. I apologize. I was like, oh, yeah, James. But I said, you know what? I think uh, it's, it's the, just the, the two of us here. Uh, so let's start from the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Uh, so how did you hear about Asian exploitation? And what was your first thoughts on an all Asian troupe? So I first heard about it through Hiromi Okuyama. Do you know Hiromi, Jeff? I think you mentioned him or her. Yeah, her. Uh, anyway, so, go ahead. 
so a couple years before we started before Asian exploitation, I was doing some improv. Actually, I did improv in Quebec City. Yes. Um, when I was learning French, and I enjoyed it, had a lot of fun. Didn't do it for a while, and then I remember having a conversation with Susan, telling her how much I loved, um, you know, the improv stuff. Uh, do we have a visitor here? Um, oh, and there. turn the camera off. That'd be great. Thank you. How are you doing? And um, so I told Susan how much I loved improv and that it would be fun to try in English since I had been doing it in French. I'd done a little bit in English. And so we started a, we just did improv jams in the basement at her mom's place. And Hiromi was one of the people that um, came on board and kind of helped us craft sessions and, and had a lot of fun with that. And then one day Hiromi said, oh, there's, uh, there's this place next door that um, uh, they're forming an all Asian sketch comedy tr troupe. So she worked at her dad's dojo, which is right next to the Bad Dog Theater. Oh, really? Um, okay. Dojo Okuyama. There, there was a karate school. I don't know if just to the east of, of that place. So I mentioned it to Susan and, you know, we came down for the, uh, for the meeting slash audition. And yeah. it was, and I remember what hearing about it, you know, in an all Asian sketch comedy troupe. Um, and it was kind of interesting because we were, we were not, it was not an all Asian kind of improv group, but you know, there, there were many Asians in the group that we were with. So I had never done sketch before and I was very, um, you know, nervous about trying it, but I thought it might be fun to try and kind of see what it was like. Okay. And it certainly it was a, a great experience. Nice. Nice. Um, so, oh, and so you mentioned you didn't come back as well. Um, so yeah, so you had some sort of background in that. Um, and so let's talk about, so we are, myself and you are like the still the original members and we've been carrying the namesake for so many years, 15 years to be exact, of course. Wow. Um, so, so how do you feel like we haven't done a full sketch show since 2010, um, sorry, 2015, 16, 16, yeah, 10 years uh, was our show, uh, but we still have the name and we still are doing like uh, twice a month improv jams in person, of course, and then all of a sudden we had to go to online due to the pandemic. Um, so what's keeping you going? Let's, let's put it that way. Oh my God, where are these questions coming from? Um, I mean, when, when we were doing sketch shows, there was always the pressure of doing a sketch show that was, you know, kind of kind of an impetus and, and the fun um, and and the creativity involved. And so that was kind of keeping it going on its own. And then I think when we morphed into, you know, starting to do the, the comedy labs, there was there was a fun, a really fun thing and of yeah. creating and trying something new that that I really liked. And so since then, just trying new things adapting to the pandemic, you know, and trying some new things. So we've done like some sketch writing, we've, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to shoot some stuff online and and the group's been really good and and even venturing out with, uh, um, you know, some, the comedy lab, the, the Saturday jams just to practice. So it, it feels fresh and fun. And that I guess is is in the end, what's, uh, what's keeping me going. Yeah, I, I'm the same what way. Like, like, yeah, then the same way, like it, there was pressure to do a yearly show um and i think after uh, our, our last official show and we sort of lost members we're like well let's just still do the the comedy labs and see what happens after that and i, I guess no one really stuck around <laughs> uh, so you know we just kept doing the comedy labs over and over again and we had a core group that always joined and i i think that's that's it we just had fun um you know um if, if you're not having fun why like i, I tell people when we're doing workshops you know when we do this, these sort of pickup shows, and I say, if you're having fun on stage, the audience will realize that. And no matter how you screw it up or how genius you are on stage, the important thing is to have fun. And that's what we're still doing. We're having fun doing improv. And whether it's, it's in a full auditorium in front of people or whether it's just online with like 10 people total, including performers, you know, just like a regular improv show. Um, I think having fun is the important thing. And that's why we're still here doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. All right. Um, oh, and other than improv, I know you've been in some uh, short films and maybe some 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 uh, some TV. I think uh, w w in, in the acting world, or I could be wrong. I <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there there's something. I mean, those. Yeah. So I was, and I think it's through Asian exploitation as well that I got an opportunity to act in some some short short films. So that was always that was nice. Uh, we, you know, with Gene and Franco uh, and 
and Keith Locke, um, you know, oh. with Franco with Aram Collier, uh, Pockets. So there have been a few that I've been involved in and I've really enjoyed it. I remember, uh, you know, taking some acting lessons and, oh, and also, yeah, Go For Broke with Akil um, or Akira Senshi, uh, who was, um, who was in it as well. So it's been, yeah, it's been nice and a, and something I've wanted to do for a long time. So I'm really happy to have had the opportunity to do so. Awesome. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share some old pictures. And if the, uh, oh, if all of the OG cast can come back on camera, uh, we'll just finish off. But uh, so here's our group shot. Again, I showed this before, uh, taken by, by Marcel. Uh, here's a picture of uh, Susan, Sandy, and Pauline. Uh, there's Brian Lee, Glenn, and Gene. Uh, Daryl, is Daryl here yet? Has he? No? Okay. Damn you, Gamotin. Uh, Gary Chan, Max, uh, and Jane, our director. Uh, we'll have something special from Jane. Um, this is our first scene. For those of you who weren't there, uh, basically this we set it up as this is what our weekly uh, uh, rehearsals look like. And it, if you can't tell, it's actually uh, Sandy twerking, but it wasn't called twerking back then. It was something else. Uh, and Brian, uh, sorry, uh, and Gary trying to rap. And all of us looking in either disgust or like, what the hell is going on? Um, sort of lay. Uh, this is Max. He's doing a stand up set. Uh, so we had uh, Pauline and Max and Glenn. Did, did you stand up at the first show as well? Or was it Damon? Uh, or did you all four of Brian. you? Brian Lee. Yeah, Brian. Oh, Brian did, yes. I look I fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not too sure what that is. If, if you don't remember. Um, oh, and this is, I believe, the, the cell phone sketch. Uh, that we did. Um, yeah, it, when the world first had cell phones, we're trying to compare what is the best cell phone. Um, oh, and here's our improv set led by, by Gary. And uh, we were very colorful back then. I love the, the, the very bright shirts that we all wore and whatnot. Uh, oh, there's Pauline's stand up set. How's she doing? Um, and of course, um, I was actually reading that. <laughs> An oh, email when I was going through some old files. Um, it was uh, Gary Chan, uh, uh, one of our, our good friends, Jerry and Caruana, was asked how the Gary went show went, and uh, he went, "Well, Jeff pulled his pants down." And Jan goes, "Well, it's not a <laughs> show if Jeff doesn't, you know, pull trow." I was like, "Yeah, that's true." Uh, basically, the setup for the show is that it's a men's bathroom. So picture stalls where in between myself and Damon and myself and Gary and they're throwing wasabi peas and I'm trying to do my business as best I can. Um, but yeah, but you know, there we go. This might've been the start of, of the Santos um, era of, of going pantsless. Uh, and here is uh, the final party at Max's house. And like I said, unfortunately, Jane uh, is not with us tonight. Uh, she's still alive. She can't <laughs> join. Sorry. <laughs> I'm doing a Brian Lee. Uh, James, you know, she, no. Uh, Jane cannot be with us tonight. She has other commitments. Uh, but she did send uh, a very heartwarming message. And uh, I've asked Gary to read it for us. Uh, so, Gary, if you don't mind, uh, please do. Sure. Yeah, it'll, it'll be an honor to read uh, Jane's message here for, uh, for the troop. Um, so, here we go. Apologies for not sharing in the festivities with all of you tonight. Here are some random general memories. I remember when I was asked by Glenn, Gary, and Jeff to direct the first show, Be Specific, which I still think is the greatest name ever. I was so honored and thrilled as they wanted to have an all Asian cast for their comedy sketch troupe. I went to a gathering at the Bad Dog Theater basement and didn't know any of the cast at all except for Glenn, Gary, and Jeff. And I don't remember if they were all there or not. I just felt I had my work cut out for me because they didn't know me from Adam, so I would have to gain their trust that I knew what I was doing, that I knew what was funny. They listened to my ideas and were open to the concept of sketches around the North American Asian experience versus the old tropes of talking about multiculturalism. I felt we all had something to say as first or second generation Asian Canadians and was happy to hear they were willing to work in that direction. What I did not expect was the huge cast. There was such dedication. People showed up and waited patiently, at least to my knowledge, when I had to work scenes with some of the other cast. It was exciting to use our cell phones like big lighters in the We Are The World parody. I copied my own idea from an early fringe show. 
I know I hadn't seen that anywhere else, and it says so much about our technology and our Asian ingenuity. I know it was pretty new because I think a few cast members didn't even have a cell phone at the time. I earned the moniker of the warden in that show from Brian Lee. It's a title I wore proudly and made sure to uphold this reputation. <laughs> <laughs> Tofu TV was the second show I directed, which parodied the medium of television. Always a fun topic for me. The cast did not disappoint. This was a tougher show as it was our second one and I want to ensure that we didn't repeat scene ideas from the first show. Also, the quality had to be better, so I'm sure there were challenges in the writing and also more challenges in the directing. One other thing I want to mention is the process. Originally with the first show, we would improvise some ideas and then we would write them. But the group decided to write scenes first and expand on them later. I applaud them all for that. Smart fortune cookies to all of you. I had a health issue later in 2006 and had to put everything on hold. I am most proud to say I am now in my 15th year of remission. So in no particular order, thank you, Glenn, for the best first title of a show. Gary, for you're always supporting me at the Bad Dog and in the group. Jeff, for your amazing musical talent and endless endurances of, of groaners. Susan, for your brave turn at improvising in Shakespeare and letting me take care of your babies. Jean, for your friendship and your immense comedic talent. James, for always knowing the best place to eat after shows and teaching me Mandarin, though sorry to say I'm a bad student. Pauline, for becoming a colleague and friend in the biz. Sandy, for your enthusiasm and always jumping in no matter what. Damon, for taking what you know to produce shows of your own. Daryl, with that Daryl Kamboten grin, your generosity on stage and hilarious comedic timing. Max, for your unique perspective as the newest Asian Canadian in the group. And of course, Brian, who got married after the first show, or was it the second? I hope you come back to performing one day. I will warden you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for enriching my experience and would love to have bubble tea in the future if there still isn't a tapioca shortage. Congrats to all and happy anniversary. Joy Kin, love, Jane. Awesome. That is amazing. Um, yeah. And uh, along with that, she just wanted to say that, uh, she, that, as you know, Jane Luke is a professional actor as well. Uh, she'll be on Handmaid's Tale. Um, the episode that airs on June 2nd on Crave. And then she'll be on Burdock's Mysteries, Season 4, Episode 9. So make sure uh, to head there. And uh, if those of you that don't know that at most at the end of most exposition shows and uh, comedy labs, James will take us to the best places to eat. Uh, and also for the most bang for your buck. You know, it tastes good and it's cheap. So, and it's, that's just amazing. It, it, it's a great... Um, yeah, great thing to have um so i think this is it i, I would love to, uh, just to take a quick picture so uh if everyone just smile and i'll take i'll take care, care of the picture myself so um get rid of this hold on one second oh let's see <laughs> all right everyone smile and here we go okay perfect sorry and let's just do one more hold on give me a second all right ready smile Okay, um, and I know that there's some other institution alumni that's with us as well, uh, including Andrew and JP Lee. So if ever, if those people could also video on as well and just like to, to carol on the tradition. Um, and there's Andrew, Andrew and JP. And Akil is also. Hey. Yeah. Akil, please join us. And and well, join us on. The, there we go. That's it. Uh, uh, anyone else? Is that it? I think it is. Yeah. So for those of you that know, uh, Andrew was our, our, our second director. Uh, when the show started, I think it was uh, Up Your Yangtze. Yes, sir. Show. Yeah, that was the, the, the show that he uh, started directing for us. <laughs> um, yeah. And then JP Lee. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah. And actually, since JP's here, Diana, if you're still on here, why don't you get on here as well? <laughs> Might as well. Diana. That's it. Yes. I was like, who's that? Oh, it is. Okay. That's who it is. I was like, 
Who's this? There's Anna. Yay. There we go. Um, so yeah, so JP Lee was the front of the house manager and then Diana took over from that. Uh, some great stuff. And for those of you that don't know, I actually proposed to Diana on the stage of, uh, of our Best of show, um, which is so great. And actually, actually, what's funny, I don't know if people know that, but uh, on Diana and I's first date, it was during Little Italy, we actually ran into JP Lee and, and Andrew. And that was your second and date, right? I met Andrew on a remount show. Oh, yeah, that's the first time we met in person. And also, I met Sandy there, too. Okay. <laughs> but Andrew, I guess. I have no recollection of <laughs> It's all those plants. It happened. So, uh, so, Andrew, what was, uh, I, I'm guessing that before you started directing us, you, you, you have heard of us and you saw one of our shows. So what was your first impression when you heard of, of us? Uh, it was... Uh, I think it was uh, it was one of the hotels in the West End, like either the Gladstone. Oh, yeah, or... it was a sketch fest Drake. then. Yeah, yeah Gladstone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My one memory from that show is James getting caught in a blackout. Like I think maybe a cue is missed or something, or somebody forgot a line. But <laughs> James was just looking very um, <laughs> honest and adorable, and somewhat naked and unprotected <laughs> as the lights went down around him. Uh, so like normal then go the way maybe perhaps you wanted to and i thought i could help a little bit <laughs> we got forced oh, andrew to direct us that's it yeah well uh, i think uh, i don't yeah, know actually, if we did that scene ever again <laughs> uh speaking of sketch fest it was funny like when we first uh got into sketch fest um julianne snaps uh i forgot what her maiden name was she did mention when she introduced us she said this is an invitation this is the largest troop that we've ever had uh, hit our stage at once with the 12 people and we did have that many it's like we had three mini troops combined into one stage um, that was it um and uh, akira so hey. i know i remember that we you were part of one of our workshops at U of T, and you're a friend of james correct yeah yeah I, I met james it was back in 2008 i believe that was when you first came over to UFT and you presented improv. And I was like, what is this? This is something new. I want to try it. And I just jumped in and, and there was no turning back. I decided nice. to become a fan of every single Asian exploitation show after that. <laughs> I was stalking everybody. <laughs> and it was great. It was good energy, good fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that led up to my audition, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Exactly right. Um, and uh, yeah, so JP and, and JP and Lee and, and Andrew are together, uh, and Diana's my wife. And uh, I think yeah, everyone's heard about this, but on our first date with my first date with Diana, we were doing um, All Grown Up, and we had a famous scene where we were dancing to single ladies in our diapers. And uh, on our first date, I picked Diana up from work, and she had to put her work bag in my trunk. And I opened my trunk, and there were the adult diapers uh, for the show. And of course, I said, um, I'm in the show. It, this is this is for a sketch, and she and we still went on the date with me, and almost ten years later, we're still together and we're married. So you know, I'm doing something right, uh, <laughs> right, babe, Diana, Di Diana, hello, <laughs> nothing. Okay. Um. All right. So, uh, if we could all just smile for one big group picture. Uh, you ready, everyone? All right. Cheese. All right. There we go. Um, so yeah, oh, sorry, I gotta do this. I apologize, I gotta do this one more time. Ah, oh, damn, Asian math. All right, ready, one more time, smile. Okay, that's the last time. All right, so for uh, our audience members, I'd like to thank everybody. I'd like to thank the OG cast uh, for this opportunity. This is a very, very historic moment uh, and very exciting. Uh, I think for all of us, if it wasn't for, for Glenn's brainchild of this, we wouldn't be together here tonight. We wouldn't be together um, just having fun on stage and having fun meeting, you know, and just rehearsing and just meeting up to eat uh, wherever, whenever. And there's so many other cast members from different shows like Andrea, Isabel, AP. The uh, list goes on. It's just amazing. And um, yeah, stay tuned. Um, so like I said before, uh, James and uh, is going to lead the Comedy Lab Rats in an improv session. Everyone that's still here is more than welcome to stay, but if you have to go, I understand. Um, so yeah, so 
Um, that's it. We're going to have a, have a quick break. And like I said, if you want to just hang out for a bit before the improv starts, that's great. But uh, James, what time do you want to start? 8.30, roughly? Yeah, we'll start at 8.30. So we'll kind of keep it open for the next 15 minutes. People who are off camera, feel free to join back in. And um, if people need to drop out, that's great. It was great to see everybody in case anyone is leaving and hope we get a chance to connect. And certainly when the pandemic's over, maybe we can all go for some food. I'll figure out a place we can go um, or connect some other way. So. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for this reunion special. And uh, we'll see whoever Everyone. wants to stay for the improv. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. No, no, it's, it's amazing. That's awesome. Good to see um, you, Brian. I'm alive. Hey, Gary, Damon, <laughs> Susan, <laughs> in touch. Glenn, good to see you. Max, Thanks. good to see you. Pauline. Pauline Thanks for saving this recording of James from like 2006. <laughs> yes. Really yes. He's the, uh, he's the I don't know how you did it. Of exploitation. I, I did it, yeah. Animatronics. God bless you, Jeff. I, I know. Let's do this again in 10 years. Okay. <laughs> 10? <laughs> 25, okay. That's it. Awesome. Oh, 25th anniversary. Uh, great seeing you, Andrew and JP. Holy cow. How's the cat yeah, doing? Yeah, unfortunately, we can't stay for the improv, but no worries. Um, amazing <laughs> seeing everybody. So, congratulations. 10 more years. No, not 10. 15? 15. 15. I can't count. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, so once we, once the pandemic's over, we'll all have somewhere to go eat some dim sum or some Korean barbecue or something. And yeah, we'll do that. Sounds good. All right. James and I will go to San Sote. Santoka. <laughs> oh, here it comes again. Battle is no. still Sans Sote is good. It, it's 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 oh. improved since I we last had this big argument about. Oh yes. Have That's you tried good. a ramen restaurant called Konjiki Hototogis? Yeah, no. it's it's really good. Yes, it, yeah. they got the Michelin star in Japan. Hmm. Is this figured. the one on Elm? Actually, no, one one in North York and one downtown. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I'll check it out when I go to Japan this September. I'm actually heading there. What? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I'm saving for Japan. Are you going to fly to Japan? It's all Ollie, the Ollie, you want to hop along? I have been I, you know what? This whole pandemic, I've been watching YouTube videos of like people in Japan. And I'm just like, I want to go to Japan so bad. Ollie, I'll put you in a bag. Let's go. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Easy, hold on. <laughs> I'll go to Japan. Back. Not creepy at all. <laughs> Not creepy at all. <laughs> yeah, we group around. Like Tinder. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks for having me. Uh, this no really problem. was nice. Good to see you, everybody. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hopefully, we really brought a tear to my eye in a good way. <laughs> You're and, rocking uh, it. Good job, Jean. If uh, yeah, if any yeah, uh, am I allowed to plug or yeah, go yeah, ahead. Please. Uh, yeah. Please. I apologize. I should have mentioned that before. I apologize. Go ahead, plug. plug, no, it, plug. it comes. Uh, it comes out in September. Uh, the, it's a movie called uh, Man from Toronto. Uh, oh, oh it's, you're it's, in that it's work, board. Workout. Uh, I might be on the screen talking to Woody Harrelson. So we'll nice, Hi. nice, nice. Yeah, plant, plant related, of course. That's right. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually auditioned for uh, for one of Joe Coy's movies. I didn't get it though. Yes. Did you, Gene? Uh, no, uh, they went with an all American. Oh, of course. I actually, they said uh, everyone except you, and then they pointed directly at me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that was the important thing. Uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah. And then uh, I believe at some point there's a Audible has a uh, podcast. Uh, the great author Catherine Hernandez is uh, uh, working on it. She's uh, a great Filipino Canadian yes. author, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, once I know the details, I'll send you the truth. It'll be—I don't know if it'll be on Spotify, but it'll be on Audible for sure. Okay. And Gene, okay, I love wait. your episode of The Detectives on CBC. Thank you. Uh, oh. Starring, touched by an angel's uh, Paul Pavlovich. Uh, he didn't love. To, he didn't uh, live up to that title, unfortunately. <laughs> I was no angel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, thanks, man. Yeah, uh, just grateful to be working. I guess during these taciturn times. Yeah, uh, I did work on a commercial with Pauline at one point. 
Uh, we got rain. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, honestly, and um, that was an American commercial, wasn't it? Yeah, it ended up being a U.S. Uh, national thing. There's a, yeah, the tri-state area. Oh, wow. Area. Yeah. Totally forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I just want to say thank you so much. For, uh, yeah, it was, it was great seeing you. And a uh, great seeing everybody. It's been so yeah, long. Really, uh, since this cast got I together. Mean, if it wasn't past uh, my roommate's bath time. She actually pays most of the rent, so that's <laughs> so. So so does mine, Dory. I know. The cat. Oh, yes, the cat. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> Clarify. Yeah, Diana, you know what? Uh, you got to fight the patriarchy. You don't have to put your title. They're not just titles. Wifey? Diana, you're a person. Well, you know, because yeah. he's, he's got so many fans, we just have to be careful. They know there's a wifey out there. Oh, thank you. Nice. Mm-hmm. You don't want you don't want a John Lennon, this guy. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, yeah. I honestly, uh, yeah, I really miss seeing everybody and i really am proud particularly uh james and jeff uh the the james cheng the one that's numbered number one i don't know what you did with the other james <laughs> yes oh he's dead <laughs> yeah. sorry you had to fight the other ones yeah to the death but, uh, <laughs> thanks for carrying it on it's amazing that you guys are still you know bringing it on and uh hopefully we can do a non- show thing yes and if you guys want to get together in zoom yeah that would be amazing all right we'll uh, do that. susan's in her courtyard with all her uh, courtesans there uh <laughs> are you are they lighting the lantern there susan where you my courtesans yeah. what you, you you look like you're from a period piece it looks like it does uh, yeah i believe house of flying daggers <laughs> that's what they do not it mine like i didn't paint it but it's... oh it looks very accurate i really thought that was like that <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought you were outside too. I thought, oh, she outside. That's nice. No. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I can so smell it's going off the trousers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Hey. Oh, hey. hey Ryan. Ryan. Hey, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> it's so cool to see everybody all together like this. Oh, I know, man. Yeah. Uh, I remember one of your shows a long, long time ago. You were, uh, you were a favorite go to white guy. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the least toxic. Uh, I Sandy. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, sorry. What? Second. Uh, Pauline. Oh, sorry, Andrew. Oh, sorry. I struck a nerve with a. Uh, right? Pauline was a matchmaker. <laughs> yes, she was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, that's what my uh, my background is. My past life was a, a matchmaker. I've actually match made three couples two are still together with children and so i think that's why i'm dying alone because that was my my uh former china chinese life back in the old country you know in the 1600s yeah so as a matchmaker so i think that's who i am now i'm just a matchmaker <laughs> so whoever wants to um, <laughs> anybody need to match me let me know uh, I'll I'll no. wait till the second dose, Pauline. Keep me posted. <laughs> uh, that's my second dose. Uh, guys, okay. I miss and love you guys. All right, Gene. Have a great have a great Take care, night. Gene. See you later. Bye, Gene. Bye, Gene. Yes. Have a great Bye, night, guys. Bye, Gene. Bye, Gene. Take care, guys. All right, I think James wants to get the improv going soon, right, James? Yeah, we'll get soon. We can. Right. A couple minutes. People can no still. Worries. Awesome. Chat a bit if you guys want. Okay. See you, Andrew. Bye, I'm gonna oh, head out, eat some calories. So. Does does everyone still live around Toronto? Like Max, are are you in the city? He's in the same place. Same place how you used to be? Oh, when we had the yeah, it's us. I still live in the same place. What's what's that vegetable called? Fennel. Oh. You make fennel. I I've never had fennel before, and you're like, you had this recipe. I was like, wow, it's great. Oh, fennel? You know what? Fennel? <laughs> I, isn't it that vegetable that's kind of like, anyways, that's fine. Isn't that weird? <laughs> People have weird yeah. memories, right? And I remember your stand up and the, the joke about some some of your friends that were in the United States and, from, and they couldn't speak English very well, and they were asking about exchange rates. So they were at, they went to the exchange booth and he said, uh, 
you know, they, they exchanged money and then the rate was really high or unfavorable for the Japanese yen. So they said, you know, why, you know, why is it like that? And then the person said, it's the fuck fluctuation. <laughs> why? It's like the fluctuation. And he's like, no, fuck you, American. <laughs> Anyways, your delivery was much better, but I still remember, I was like, <laughs> that was hilarious. That actually reminds me, there's this restaurant in Japan, it's called, it's it's First Kitchen. And if you shorten it up, it's it's Fakin. And so <laughs> I had a, I had a friend come over, and he kept asking, he's like, uh, is there fucking here? Is there fucking here? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, is this a child-friendly show? Sorry, I forgot. Are there children listening? Not in? anymore, it's not. Anyways, no. our improv. Games, will, you will started it. I'm leaving you. You started. I know it is my fault. I <laughs> repeating that joke. So definitely fond memories from that time. Um, yeah, it's good. Cool. Hey guys, have fun tonight. That was fun. Right. Thanks, Pauline. Hey, good to see you. Hey, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm going to drop off as well. So, uh, uh, James, Jeff, thanks for playing this night together. It's awesome. It's great to see everybody. I uh, love you all. Everybody take care, and hopefully, we'll see each other soon in real life. Yes. All right. Awesome, Gary. Bye, 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 everyone. Bye, Good Gary. to see Gary. Bye. 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 Okay. All right. So, I'm going to stop recording and then I'll let Basil take over. And uh, yeah, I'll send this out to everybody.